When you choose a new car, there are magazines full of driving impressions and running costs to help you make an informed choice. And thanks to the likes of our Top Gear JD Power surveys, you can also get an idea of just how reliable your cars and your dealers are likely to be. But when it comes to the life and death matter of how your prospective purchase will shape up in a crash, there's very little to go on. Car makers make great play in adverts of side impact bars, crumple zones and airbags because safety sells. But how do we know they're really going to work when it comes to the crunch? Under current crash test legislation, cars are driven into a solid concrete block at 30 miles an hour and manufacturers are only required to ensure that the steering collar moves less than five inches, which doesn't mirror real very accurately. But testing is about to get much tougher. The Department of Transport has instigated a series of new comparative crash tests, starting with the most popular group of cars sold in Britain, Super Minis. First, the seven best sellers were crashed into a deformable barrier at 40 miles an hour, five miles per hour higher than the European standard to be introduced in 1998. Then they took fresh cars and smashed them from the side at 30 miles an hour, a typical side impact, using a trolley with a deformable front. That also will be law for new models of car next year. Dummies full of instruments measured the sorts of forces that people inside the cars would suffer, and these were totted up for an overall score. This European new car assessment program is crash testing cars, frontal impact, side impact and pedestrian protection. The information is then published, and those people who want to choose their cars on the basis of safety can use that to help their choice. Well, I wouldn't have liked to have been in this rover in this particular accident, that's for sure. If we're going to protect people in frontal impacts, the first thing we want to ensure is the passenger compartment remains essentially intact. And you can see here that it's collapsed. We've had a lot of intrusion, and that makes it much more likely that the driver or the passenger are going to hit the front of the car. We also have a problem that the passenger compartments mm -hmm. come un become unstable. The door hasn't maintained its position and held the door opening in position. If we compare it with the Polo, what we have there is a passenger compartment that has essentially maintained its integrity and it's stable. If there was a slightly more severe impact, it would only collapse a little bit more than it has at the moment. It's not going to collapse catastrophically. In general, how have you found that the dashboard has performed? There's a problem that the dashboard can become detached from the side of the car. On the Punto here, you can see that the weld at the side of the car attaching the dashboard to the side have failed. What we want is to ensure that this remains in contact and we protect the integrity of the passenger compartment. Now, as you'd expect, with, with all the cars involved in this frontal impact test, of course, the airbags have deployed. They have. The airbag is relatively new. It's designed to protect the head and stop it from being injured from hitting the steering wheel. Of course, what we need to ensure is that at the time the head moves forward, the airbag's in the right place, and we have a problem in this Clio, for example, where the steering wheel has moved to the left, it's also moved upwards a little, and the driver's head has come off to the right-hand side of the airbag, and there's a serious risk of injury from hitting the windscreen pillar. Now, obviously, we've talked about airbags, but the most important thing, presumably, is that you should be wearing your seatbelt, as all your dummies did in the test. That's right. You must wear your seatbelt to hold you back in position and stop you hitting the front of the car. But in this Corsa, we can see a problem that has arisen. Though the passenger is in a relatively minor type of impact, the head went forward and hit hard on the fascia top here, um, giving a much too high result on the dummy, which would indicate the risk of a fatal or serious injury. What about injuries to the lower body, then? Yes, we've looked at the upper part of the body, but the knees can hit the fascia, causing serious or fatal injuries in the pelvis or a lot of disabling injuries. We look at whether there are items in the structure, as in this micro, where we have a stiff part of the steering column mount that could constantly load on, load on the knee. What you see in your car is a nice plastic fascia, but behind that there are often structures which are not really designed for you to hit with your knees. Now something we haven't looked at yet is, is the footwell. Yes, footwells are a problem. We have the risk of injury to the ankle and feet, but we have no instrumentation in the dummies to identify how well the uh, 
people would be protected. Even in this fiesta, which performs quite well, we've got intrusion into the footwell and potential difficulties there. Clearly, in a car like the Rover, the footwell intrusion is much more severe and the risk of injury is much greater. Although two-thirds of casualties result from frontal impact, side impact accidents can be more severe and account for more than a third of fatalities. That's because there's very little between you and whatever bashes into your car. You only have to watch the test to see that although there are less side impact crashes, the risks are greater, which means far more serious accidents. Surprisingly, it's not how much the side of the car caves in which matters, but the manner in which it caves in. The polo, which did very well in front impact tests, didn't do so well in side impact. In accidents like this, injuries to your chest and pelvis are particularly frequent. And the way in which the car caves in is very important in reducing injury. It's also preferable if you don't have a projection like this on the inside of the door. So what were the results? Well, all of them had problems, but each car has been given a star rating. The top performing Polo and Fiesta scored three. The Corsa, Micra, Clio and Punto were awarded two, while the Rover, which is due to see action this year, gets just one star. The new testing means much more information for consumers about how cars perform in a crash. And certainly there'll be increased pressure on manufacturers to make changes. Super minis are only the first group to be assessed. Testing's already taking place on family cars. The results of those will be out this summer.